It is 8.17 <laughs> on this beautiful, freezing, cold November 13th, no, 14th, 2022, Monday. And uh, we're moving the cows to a new row as we do every Monday morning. There's a nice shot of Yellow and her beautiful heifer calf. <laughs> yeah, it's safe, Yellow. Come on. You can go to the new row. I'll get behind you. I'm not going to stop you. So, go for it. Come on, Slowpoke. <laughs> what a beautiful calf. They're so funny when they're first born. They can barely walk. But they look so happy. So I need to move the water and the minerals. Um, I noticed that their uh, manure is starting to pile up, which su suggests that they're not getting quite as much protein as they should. Um, I don't know that I, like some of the patties are getting a little bit tall. I don't know. Maybe I'll bring my last protein hockey puck, the giant thing over. This is the new row. Um, over here, the grass isn't quite as good, but the further you go west in this pasture, the squishier and softer the grass gets. Um, it's cold enough now that I don't know that the warm season grass is going to grow much more, especially not this week. We might get a warm week next week. You never know the weather pattern shift, but you should be able to see that there's definitely a line between the left and the right. Uh, like over here, there's definitely some grass growing and the further you go down, the better it gets a little. And also over here, the further south you go towards where they're going to move next, we get some more grass. So oh, here's an old patty. See, it just turns to paper. The top of it just turns to paper. Anyway, so this is where they'll be next. And I don't know how much longer this grass lasts for, um, but you can see it's quite green down there. All the way to the tree line, that's how far my pasture goes. Uh, I'm not quite halfway there. I think the halfway point is just past, past those H posts. Maybe a little bit past those. That's the halfway point. So we got another month and a half or two months in this pasture. And I'm debating whether to move them to my neighbor's 20 or wait until spring. I think I'll probably wait until spring. Early spring, I'll put them in the neighbor's pasture. See what they do there. This is the first chicken cover shelter thing that I built. Um, it was made using some uh, uh, panels. And these are welded wire, they're thick welded wire. I had two pieces of rebar that go across and I welded them. Um, my experience with welding is this. <laughs> uh, the weld broke, so it, it came apart. Um, it wasn't quite standing up like I wanted it to. Um, what I would do next time is I saw another guy who does actually welding at a far more professional level than I do. I'm not gonna say he's a professional because I don't think that's his profession, but uh, what he did is he took the, the cross beams here and he made like an L at the end with like a good two or three inches. And then he welded that two or three inches to the bar uh, so that it had more strength. And I'm like, genius, <laughs> that's what I'll do next time. So I'll get some rebar one of these days and probably reuse this shelter. This is probably a pretty decent shelter, especially if I build uh, kind of, you know, across here so that I can fill it in with either chicken wire or something. Um, you can almost stand up so I, I can, I can climb through no problem, which is, I think is important because I want to be able to get in and do things on the inside. This is an early watering solution I had for the chickens. It's just an idea I wanted to try out. The problem with this one is if it's if the ground is in any way not level the water will pour out one end and there'll be no water on the other end 
So, yeah, that's something I didn't consider. Here comes the calves. Look at them bouncing. Oh, so cute. So we should have grass to last for a while. Um, we should have at least a couple weeks of grass when we go back to the beginning of this row, of this field. <clears throat> and all said, all together, um, I might be able to escape without buying any more feed. But just in case, I'm ready to buy more feed if I need to. So I'm going to finish setting up this area, bring in the water. Let me show you my watering solution. Um, I'm pretty proud of myself for this. Um, I got these Rubbermaid uh, troughs. They're, I think they're 80 bucks. It's either, like, it's something like that. I think it's like 60 gallon, um, 80 bucks. I got these Job valves. You drill a hole, you plug it in, and you just hook it up to your water system with a hose. Is it perfect? No. Um, it took me a while to find the right knot. Right now I'm using a figure eight knot on the other side of that float. And that, that's held up pretty well. All the other knots failed. Um, you just fiddle with it till you get the knot right. And then you have to test it. And that means letting it fill and come back and seeing how full it is. Right? You can see the ground's not level here. But I, I don't fill it up near the top, so it kind of doesn't matter. Right? Um, some problems I'm having with my system. Let me show you. So the quick connect system. Um, there's a leak somewhere. So that's not supposed to be full of water. And um, I'm not exactly sure where the water is coming from. It could be coming from any number of places. I think it's coming from maybe where the hose connects to the connector. That's not quite connected correctly. I might have to fiddle with that. But the quick connect, the mail thing, um, one of them, I, I, I think I damaged the thread on it. If you put too much pressure or force in the wrong direction, you'll damage it. Let me show you what I mean. This one isn't damaged. Maybe it is. I don't know. But So you see how this black thing, this is the male end, it screws into the hose. I think I might have damaged one of them. Um, I don't know. Anyway, guys, I'm signing off. My hands are freezing. I need to put them in my pockets and I need to finish this work. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.